With the savings plan formula, we were able to make regular repeated deposits and really take advantage of the power of interest. Um, all of that extra money uh, goes into our account and helps build wealth. However, interest does have another side and that comes into play when we're looking at loans where you borrow money and then have to pay that extra amount to the bank for being able to have access to that money up front. Okay, so this is the loan formula. Notice that it looks very similar to our savings plan formula with a couple of important differences. All of our variables are the same, so we don't have to learn anything really new there. Um, oops, I missed that here. Do, 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 do. Uh, the two things that we do need to keep in mind here is that this exponent up here is negative. This is a negative NT in our loan formula. And the location of the, the one minus in the savings formula, it was at the end here as minus one. Here it's one minus at the beginning. So this is our formula. Um, in this case, A is the amount of the loan. This is the lots of money up front and we hope to have zero owed at the end. D is our regular payment. Um, R is our interest rate, of course, in decimal form. N is the number of compounding periods per year or the number of payments per year, if you want to think of it that way. Almost always uh, we're doing monthly payments. That's just kind of the norm, uh, but do read the problem. It's not required to be monthly uh, to see if there's something a little bit different in play there. T of course is going to be our time in years. Just like with the savings plan formula, it is really important to watch for the locations of all the parentheses as you're typing them in and um, work on that to, to get our, our value. All right, let's try a couple of examples here. Suppose that we can afford a $200 car payment. We're able to locate a loan for 5.2% interest. And car loans typically are five-year loans. All right, so with this information, let's figure out how much can we borrow? How expensive? How expensive of a car can we afford? All right, our $200 regular car payment is gonna be D. Car payments are generally monthly. And so we'd be looking for our monthly car payment there with N equals 12. Our time is five years and our interest rate is 5.2%, so 0 0.052 will be our R value in our formula. Coming up here, we're looking for how much we can borrow. We're looking for the amount of the loan. So we're looking for A. And now we can fill in all the variables that we know. D is 200. This time we have a single set of parentheses because of where everything is lying. We have one minus another set of parentheses here with one plus R divided by N. So that's 0 0.052 for our interest rate divided by 12 because we're doing monthly payments. Now our exponent here is negative and then we need it to be our n times t again. In this case, our n is 12 because of monthly and we're doing uh, car payments for five years to be able to pay the car off at the end. At the end of this, we need to close off all of our parentheses up here so that we can kind of seal the deal with, with those parentheses. Then all of this is divided by that r over n value again. So 0 0.052 over 12. At this point, it's just a matter of entering all of this information into uh, your calculator version here. So pulling this up here in Desmos again, we start out with 200 times with a single parentheses here, one minus, and then we need another set of parentheses for one plus R over N. 
So 1 plus 0 0.052 divided by 12. I'm going to use my right arrow to bring me back to the main level and close that set of parentheses. And the next thing that I need is going to be my exponent. So I'm going to hit that A to the B button. I need negative 12 times 5, so we can hit our negative button there. Parentheses, 12 times 5. Oh, I missed the parentheses there. No, oh, it's there. 12 times 5. Close the parentheses and then move to the main level here to close the big set of parentheses that's all the way across the top. Then I need to divide this entire expression by the 0 0.052 over 12. Close the parentheses. Oh, come over here and close the parentheses. And it looks just like our expression right here. We hit enter and we get $10,546.85. If we can pay $200 a month, and this is the loan that we qualify, this is how much we'd be able to borrow, $10,546.85. And that will be how much we can afford uh, with this monthly payment. If we want a more expensive car than this, we'd have to make a down payment up front of some sort to bring the value down so that this is all that we have to borrow. It's also very common for us to have something that we want to purchase, and then we want to figure out what the monthly payment for that was, would be. Let's take a look at an example of buying a home. Let's suppose that you look for a home out on the market and you find one for $375,000 that you would like to buy. You qualify for a 6.12% interest loan and our typical home loans are for 30 years. So my question is, what would our monthly payment be? for a mortgage this size. All right, well, we have all of the information that we need. This value here is the amount of the loan. So 375,000 is gonna be my A. My 6.12% becomes 0 0.0612 for my R value. Uh, 30 years is my time, and we're looking for a monthly payment, so we're interested in using n equals 12. We want to find what that monthly payment would be, so we're looking for d in our formula. Here's our formula again, a equals d times 1 minus 1 plus r over n to the negative nt, close off the parentheses, divided by r over n. So if we set this up, a is my $375,000. D is what I'm looking for. One minus one plus, my rate was 0 0.0612. I'm doing a monthly payment, so I'm gonna divide by 12. Because I'm doing a loan, my exponent is negative, and it's 12 times, in this case, 30, because our house loan is for 30 years. We're going to close off that top set of parentheses and divide the whole thing by r over n, which is this 0 0.0612 over 12 again. Now, in this case, I want to solve for d. d is being multiplied by all of this stuff. So if I can simplify all of this stuff down to a single number, I'll have an easier equation to solve. I'll have 375,000 equals d times whatever this result ends up being. So let's come over here and let's figure out what all of this is. Again, make sure as you're entering your values that you reflect all the parentheses and the locations where they are. So start with the parentheses, one minus parentheses, one plus 0 0.0612 over 12. Close that parentheses and go up to our exponent position. We need a negative exponent, so negative, and then in parentheses, we want to make sure that we get both the 12 and the 30 in the 
exponent there. Close those parentheses off, and then we need a second set of parentheses on the back down on the main level. So that fits all of that. Then I want to divide the whole thing by the 0 0.0612 over 12. Oh, we want to have parentheses there. Missed that. 0 0.0612 over 12. We'll right arrow over so we can close the parentheses on the big level there. And when we do all of that, we end up with 164.67. Now, keep in mind, you're never going to be able to rent for $164. We've done a lot of calculations, but we haven't solved for D because the D is not by itself yet. So one last step here to get the D by itself. We're going to have to divide each side by this 164.67. That gets the D alone, and I'll get my answer over here on the calculator. We want to take $375,000 for the home loan and divide it by that last answer there, that 164.67. And when I do that, I come up with a D value of $2,277.33. So if I'm at this percentage rate loan, if I wanna buy a $375,000 house on credit, I will be paying $2,277.33 every month for 30 years, but then I'll own the home when I'm done.